I've been sharing with you the various mechanisms that the mind uses to trick itself and to trick others. I've been trying to inoculate you against cult psychology and against ideology and against various political left or right belief systems and materialist belief systems and religious belief systems and even new age belief systems and beliefs in general. I have episodes that cover all of these topics if you go back through my body of work. Uh, and so why did I do that? I did that precisely because I'm very cognizant of how easy it is for humans to fall into ideology and into cult dynamics. If this stuff is not explicitly discussed, then cults and ideologies will happen. And in fact, these mechanisms are so dangerous and so pervasive that even if this stuff is discussed, it will still happen. We should still discuss it and we should still take measures and aims to, uh, to avoid it as much as possible, but it still generally tends to happen because the majority of people do not possess a deep enough consciousness of these self-deception mechanisms. And so really, when something is called a cult, the problem here, there's a deeper problem than just a specific, very narrow, small organization. Most cults tend to be rather small and limited in their scope. That's not the real problem. The real problem is what I discussed in my cult psychology part two. It's not the strict cults. It's the more pervasive and subtle cult psychology, which permeates all of society. And the reason it does is because really what we're talking about is we're talking about the human mind not understanding how it works not understanding its own mechanisms, being unconscious to itself. And therefore, when these minds, which are selfish and egotistical and self-biased, they don't do any personal development, they're low in their level of development, uh, cognitively, morally, spiritually, spiral dynamic stages, red, blue, orange, green, these tier one stages, uh, these kinds of minds, when they get together, they can't help but start to behave like cults. Sometimes to a very extreme extent, but other times in more subtle ways. This is even true within academia, within science, within medicine, within government, um, within schools, amongst your friends, within corporations within nonprofit organizations. This group think, this paradigm lock is very common. And the whole thrust of my work is to correct that. I've devoted my entire life to correcting that. It's not so much for me about how to help you to earn some more money or to improve your personal life, although that is a consequence that can happen from, from doing this work. Um, and sometimes we, we cover those topics. But for me, the real point of this work, the reason I wake up in the morning and I'm excited to do these episodes and I put so much effort into them and so much, do so much research and so forth is because it's, it's painfully obvious to me that the biggest thing that holds back and re retards mankind, slows down mankind, in other words, is it's almost as though think of mankind as being stuck in this thick molasses. And this molasses is the lack of proper epistemic understanding. And this molasses permeates every single facet of culture and society. And it has for the last 10,000 years. And it still does today. You find it in the military, 
in all scientific institutions, academia, medicine, everywhere you find it. You find it within families, you find it within churches, um, and all of this then leads to the collective stupidity of mankind. And therefore, mankind is not able to understand itself and the world and its relationship to the world, and therefore, mankind suffers in all the ways that it does. Every single political problem, every single war, every single um, uh, scientific problem, even, every medical problem, like, I mean, this goes so deep. Every social problem we have and many of the personal problems we have are simply due to a lack of clear perception of ourselves, the world, and our relationship to ourselves and the world and each other. So for me, the most impactful thing I can do with my life is to communicate to mankind the mechanisms that are responsible for that, why this is happening, and how to prevent it within your own self. But the problem, of course, is that changing this is extremely threatening. It's threatening at an individual level and it's threatening at a collective level. You might wonder, well, why are we stuck in this molasses for the last 10,000 years? Surely someone would have seen it, pointed it out, and then we would have just solved it within a generation or two. But this deeply underappreciates the seriousness of our problem. We are collectively constructing reality as humans. That's what we're doing, but we're not conscious that we're doing it, and we will deny very vigorously that we are doing this. And if we can get away with this denial, then we can construct any reality we want, essentially. That's the mind's game. It's a game the mind is playing. And to escape this game is extremely difficult because your entire survival hinges upon your mind continuing to play this game. So it might seem innocent at first, like, oh, okay, yeah, Leo, this sounds like a good idea. Let's, let's just, let's just grab uh, mankind by the hair and pull everybody out of this molasses and free ourselves of this delusion, collective delusion that we're all in. That sounds nice, but have you done it yourself to yourself? Because see, what you have to do here, when you recognize what I'm telling you, is you have to, you have to recognize that you have to grab yourself by the hair and pull yourself out of this molasses. You might say, that's impossible. Well, it's almost impossible. 